So the Buffalo Bills face a team inferior on paper, inferior in the win-loss column. And guess what, folks? What do you know? They made them look inferior on the field as well. Buffalo dominated Denver on Sunday, both sides of the ball, 8-3 for the first time since 1996. And here's five reasons why. What is up, good people? Patrick Moran here, host of the Moran Analytics Podcast. Another installment of Five Reasons Why. This is my Bills postgame series where each week I'm highlighting five reasons why the Bills won or why they lost their latest game. This goes up on the Moran Analytics Podcast YouTube channel Sunday evenings. Not going to hear it anywhere else. My podcast anywhere else, quite literally, except for right here on YouTube. Today, five reasons why the Bills handled their business, did what they were supposed to do, beat Denver convincingly, and what I considered, by the way, a must-win game for Buffalo. They're now two games in front of everyone else in the AFC wildcard playoff race, but they have a very tough road ahead of them over the next month, which again, why I thought this game was must-win for the Bills. They did deliver. Five reasons. Let's get going. Coming in at number five, Cole Beasley. I thought he had his best game as a Buffalo Bill, for sure, without question. John Brown, you could tell that Denver's goal from this game, their game plan on defense was to take away John Brown. Chris Harris was on him the whole game. Sometimes they double teamed him. Did a very good job, at least for three quarters anyway, of keeping John Brown from beating them. They didn't want John Brown to hurt them. So that opened up opportunities for Cole Beasley and he took advantage. And I'll tell you what too, if you listen to my podcast on Friday's show last week, I had Benjamin Albright on, who's an NFL analyst and a talk show host based in Denver. And he said right then and there, if there's a, area of the Denver defense that could be exploited by Buffalo's offense, it would be that slot receiver, that middle of the field on Denver's defense. He thought it was right for the taking, and Ben was spot on because that's exactly what, it's exactly what Cole Beasley did. Two times specifically, one on a crossing route that was a 30-yard play that set up a Bills field goal. Then a second time, the touchdown pass over the middle to Cole Beasley. First score of the second half, put them up by two scores, and Buffalo was never really threatened again. I think Beasley might have had a game this year where he had more catches and another game where he had more yards. But today, six catches, 76 yards, and a touchdown. I thought it was his best game. He was a focal point of the offense, maybe for the first time this entire season, and he definitely delivered there. Coming in at number four, I feel like I'm sounding like a broken record when I say Trey White here, especially after Bills wins, but he deserves it. He, again, yet again, is a big reason why the Bills continue to win these type of games. Today, it was Cortland Sutton, Denver's best offensive weapon by far, and Trey White locked him down. You know, you hear the term lockdown corner all the time. It's throwing him out a lot. I feel like a little bit too loosely. But when you hold the guy who's the best receiver on that team, the one catch for 28 yards or whatever it was on the fifth play of the game, and then you hold him, blanket him, shut him out for the next 58 minutes, that's what a shutdown corner does, right? Cortland Sutton, best player, eight targets, one catch, 28 yards, and that came on Denver's fifth offensive play of the game. The rest of the game, zero. Nothing. That's all Trey White because he was on him the whole game. Oh yeah, by the way, for good measure, also had an interception, his fourth of the season. Look, if this guy is not a pro bowler, I don't know what he could do to become one because he's becoming, if he's not already, one of the very, very best corners in the NFL. Showed it again on Sunday. Big reason why the Bills won. Keeping the ball rolling here, coming in at number three, the Bills ground game. I'll tell you, I, I liked the Bills to win this game coming in, but I did not think it was going to be this type of game. I thought there might be opportunities in the passing game, and there was, and I thought the Bills would play good defense, and they did, but I didn't think the running game was going to have this kind of success on Denver because the numbers certainly didn't indicate that it would. The Broncos came into this game fifth in the NFL, rush defense, and the Bills dashed them. I mean, they dashed them all over the field in the running game. 244 yards total on the ground. Devin Singletary, the rookie, he led the way. First career 100-yard rushing game. He had 106 yards on 21 carries. Looked shifty, elusive. He was running people over at times to get extra yards. I was thrilled. I, I mean, I was literally excited watching Devin Singletary run the ball on Sunday. Frank Gore. Did his part like he always seems to do. 65 yards, 15 carries. Passed Barry Sanders, became third all-time. That was a really good moment. And Josh Allen with his, with his legs, I should say. 56 more yards on the ground. 
He had that one spectacular 18-yard run where he should have been sacked not once but twice. It was a third down and long, and he turns what should have been a sack into a first down. That's what he's been doing well all year. Ground game, really good. And again, against a Denver defense that's good against the run, they held Minnesota with Dalvin Cook, one of the best running backs in the NFL, to just 37 yards last week. They're allowing 90 yards per game or under 90 yards per game on the ground, and the Bills put up 244. Very big reason. Number two, just an overall completely dominant effort by the defense as a whole. I talked about Trey White specifically. The entire defense played really good. I mean, they decimated Brandon Allen all day, making his third career start. He's not going to look back fondly at this one. I can promise you that. 25 times he passed. He only had 82 yards in the air. I saw a stat. It was on pro football reference. That's the first time it's happened in a game, in an NFL game, in like five years. He had the Trey White interception, which I talked about. And the defense also generated four sacks. I think they had six last week. So that's 10 now in the last two weeks. The pass rush is definitely heating up. And that includes, by the way, Ed Oliver, who got off to a slow start this year, but he's really coming on. And he had a really bonehead, idiotic personal foul penalty in the third quarter. But he certainly made up for it with a nice sack. Played a very good game. You're starting to see signs of why the Bills were willing to invest a top nine pick on this guy. He's got all the talent in the world. And as he's getting more comfortable and used to being in the NFL, I think you're starting to see more and more why. Even better so too, by the way, Shaq Lawson. He had two sacks, almost had three, nearly took Brandon Allen's head off in the first half. He's playing well. In fact, I'll tell you, he's completely playing his way into a very lucrative free agent off season. He's going to get paid somewhere. I don't know if it's going to be Buffalo I don't know if it's going to be somewhere else, but this guy's finishing up his fourth year. He looks like he's just starting to hit his prime. I think he's criminally underrated in defending the run. And now he's starting to get the sacks too. I think he's up to five now on the year. So he was fantastic. Matt Milano's out there making plays all over the place. He might be. Here's a, you want a hot take? I'll give you a hot take. Matt Milano, when he's healthy, might be the best Bills player on the football team. He makes plays all over the place. I love this guy. When he's healthy, when he's right, I thought he was fantastic Sunday. Teron Johnson playing the slot. He had a couple really nice licks. I mean, even alleged, not alleged, because he has been a weak point of the team. Levi Wallace, who's not played very well in the secondary this year, he was perfectly fine too. Now, granted, a lot of this is just Brandon Allen's not a great quarterback, okay? I mean, let's not kid ourselves here. But this isn't the worst Denver offense on the face of this earth. They did go into Minnesota last week and put up 20 in the first half. So they're capable of making plays. The Bills just shut them down. Complete effort on defense. Second biggest reason why they won. And before we get to number one, I want to ask you that you hit that thumbs up button. If you like these clips, go hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you can get notifications when new content is released. Working hard now, trying to build up this channel, build up the subscription base here. I'm going to be releasing pieces similar to this. Bill stuff, other stuff, at least two to three times per week. And on that note, the number one reason why the Bills handily defeated Denver, improved to 8-3 and three on the season, and are looking very, very promising for an AFC playoff spot, is the quarterback. It's Josh Allen. He's continuing to progress, and I don't know how you feel about him as a whole, and you can make a case both ways. But what is undeniable is that he's progressing. He's becoming a better NFL quarterback. And let's get the bat out of the way. Second quarter, he threw an awful interception. It was a bad pass. It sailed high. I ain't mad at it. You know what? That happens all the time. The best quarterbacks do it. I was over it in about two seconds. That aside, and maybe one or two other throws that, again, throughout the course of a game, every quarterback would like to have a couple throws back. I loved his game on Sunday. I thought he was fantastic. I'm not going to recite the numbers because I really don't care about the numbers. I'm not talking about the numbers. I'm talking about his decisions. He threw the ball away a few times, didn't risk unnecessary turnovers that he was doing earlier in the year. He runs when he needs to, but he's not looking to run every single time now. It seems like he's more willing now to stay in the pocket and make a play with his arm, kind of like Big Ben. I've always compared Josh Allen, in my mind at least anyway. I know Cam Newton's always been the big comparison. I've always considered him, potentially, if he you know, reaches the peak of what he can be, a more athletic Big Ben. I feel like Big Ben's a guy who stands in the pocket and is willing to take hits, wait to the last second, wait for a receiver to get open, 
and make a play. I feel like that's what Josh Allen is slowly starting to become. And that was very evident on the touchdown to Cole Beasley, which for the record, my single favorite play of Josh Allen's entire career to this point. Not because it was anything fancy. I mean, I know he's jumped over dudes. He's ran people over. He's throwing the ball 80 yards in the air or whatever have you. I don't care about any of that right now. I'm talking about his maturation on that play. So I think, I believe it was third and goal. Allen's in the pocket. His first read, I believe, was to John Brown. Dude ain't open. Cole Beasley starts to break open towards the middle of the field. The pass rush is coming in. The Josh Allen that I've seen play through most of the two years would take off, right? either take off running or he would start rolling to the right, waiting forever, and probably eventually throwing the ball in the stands because he doesn't want to turn the ball over when they're up 6 nothing. He doesn't do that. He stays in the pocket. So he feels the pass rush coming, takes a lick, and delivers a beautiful ball to Cole Beasley, who, again, his secondary read, when does Josh Allen ever look at a secondary guy? Well, guess what? He did that on Sunday. Cole Beasley breaks open, hits him perfectly in stride. Bam, touchdown, 13-0. Bills are comfortably out in front rest of the way. For me, that's the continued evolution of Josh Allen as a quarterback right now that I really am enjoying seeing. He's clearly evolving little by little right in front of our eyes as a quarterback. And sure, look, he ain't Russell Wilson. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not... Deshaun Watson, he's not Aaron Rodgers, and he's not at that level yet. But you cannot deny that this guy, if you look unbiasedly and objectively, you can't say that he's not becoming a better quarterback each and every week. I see it. Hopefully you do too. Regardless, at least for this day on Sunday, in my opinion, easily the number one reason why the Buffalo Bills easily defeated Denver. And again, are eight and three after 11 games, which I tell you what, three months ago, we all would have jumped at the chance to see the Bills at 8-3. and three. That will do it for this clip. Got anything to add? Do you agree? Do you disagree about any of the five reasons I laid out? Leave it in the comments below. We'll have a conversation. Of course, don't forget to listen to the Moranalytics podcast on Tuesday. I'm going to have full coverage of this game, talk about plenty of other stuff around the league and other sports as well. Subscription links for that podcast are on all major platforms. They're down just below in the description right here. Thanks as always for listening and I'll have more content for you very soon.